Hello, fifth grade mathematicians. We are taking a look at entry task day 114. Enter the quotient 406 and 4 tenths divided by 1 and 6 tenths. So this is um, a situation where we see that we have a decimal in both the dividend and the divisor. So what we're going to do is we're going to think of this as 16 tenths and 4,064 tenths. Okay, and so if I multiplied 1 and 6 tenths by 10, and I multiplied 406 and 4 tenths, times 10, that's what I would have. And because I multiply them both by 10, I have an equivalent, um, uh, I have equivalent expressions. So I can just go ahead and divide this. And um, just like they were, were whole numbers. And then we'll, we'll check our answer at the end to see how, um, how that all looks. But right now we're going to do how many 16s go into 4? Oops, I did the wrong. Let me get this highlighter. Go into 4. Um, and we see that there are 0 16s that go into 4. But there are how many 16s that go into 40? And we know that that's actually not 40. It's um, 40 hundreds, right? So over here on the side, I'm going to count by 16s. And I've got 16, 32, 48, 64... 80, I'm just, I'm going to stop there for now. So I see that there are two 16s that go into 40, and that gives me 32. I'm going to subtract, and I'm left with 8. And I'm going to bring down 6 tens. And so now I'm going to divide 86 by 16. And I already have done the work over here on the side, <clears throat> and I'm going to do one more 16 than I did the last time. We'll go to 96. Okay. But I see that um, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5. What's going on here? Let's see. 5. How come... There we go. Technical difficulties, right? Okay. I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to bring down. How many 16s go into 64? We see that there are four of them. And we have 254 with a remainder of zero. Okay. So now we're going to check our answer, and the way we check it is we take our quotient, which is 254, and we multiply it by our divisor. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original divisor, which was 1 and 6 tenths. And I should come up with my original dividend. So here we go. 6 times 4, 6 times 5 plus 2 is 32, carrying my 3, we have 12 plus 3 is 15. Okay, we go to our second partial product, and we always put a 0 in the 1s, 1 times 4, 1 times 5, I already used this, 1 times 5, and 1 times 2. Now, this says 4,064, but 
remember, this is tenths, so I'm going to drop it down and come back to give us tenths again. So I have 406 and 4 tenths, which is what my original uh, dividend was. So my quotient of 254 is accurate. There we go. All right, number two. Nathan has seven liters of lemonade. He pours an equal amount of lemonade into 28 cups. Enter the number of liters of lemonade in each cup. Well, what are we starting with? What is our whole? And that is seven. All right? And we're dividing that whole into 28 parts. Okay, now remember how we can express that, 7 28ths, and we can simplify this now because we're so good at understanding fractions now. We know that if we divide that by 7 sevenths, we're left with 1 Fourth. So Nathan has one or um, each cup has one fourth liter of lemonade in it. There we go. Okay, for number three, whoa, it says enter the sum twelve thirds plus 7 and 1 half. Now, we know that when we add fractions, we have to have common denominators. But remember how I've uh, mentioned before, we, we can look for different strategies and different ways of doing this. Well, I know, and I'm sure you guys recognize this as well, that 12 thirds is the same as 4. Right? And I know that 7 halves is the same as 3 and 1 half. Those are fairly uh, simple calculations that we can do in our head. Now, if we do that, we are left with 4 plus 3 and 1 half, which we can calculate using mental math. 7 and 1 half. So that's a little bit different strategy than um, doing all um, coming up with a common denominator for each term. I, I certainly could have done that, but I it would take me a little bit longer. So the the more you practice working with numbers, the more you recognize those relationships. And that's where math uh, just really starts to click. And I think many of you are, are starting to um, see how, how those things work. Okay, enter the number of cups equal to 5 quarts. So I have 5 quarts equals blank cups. And 1 quart is equal to 4 cups. I have a larger unit going to a smaller unit. So I'm going to multiply 5 times 4 cups is 20 cups. So 5 quarts is equal to 20 cups. All righty. Which statement describes the value of the expression? And so when we look at that expression, what we see is this is a multiplication problem. You have, I want you to think of it like this, you have something times something, right? So even though we see that there are, there's an addition symbol in there, um, we know that whatever is in parentheses there after we calculate it is going to be... Um, the, the number that we're multiplying 4 by. So when we look at this, um, we want to see how do they describe it. Well, 
we see that this is 4 times something. So we know it's going to be 4 times as large as what's in parentheses. And the next question is, how do you describe what is in parentheses? Well, if we look at what's in parentheses, we see the addition symbol. So that is a sum. So we have 4 times the sum of something. It's not um, the product. So 4 times the sum of something would be b, right? It's 4. The value is 4 times as large as the sum of 18,932 and 921. So there you have it. Day 118 in the books.